this is the new SRV that we just got in update 9, the Scorpion. And today we're going to compare it to the old SRV, the Scarab. We're going to look at all the stats. We're going to take a ride in it. We're going to show you everything you need to know. Christmas is fast approaching, and if you don't know what to wish for, then consider checking out today's sponsor, Rich Wallet. Rich Wallets are small, compact wallets that can hold up to 12 cards. If you want to carry coins or keys, get their optional cavity tray. All their wallets are made from premium materials like aluminium, carbon fiber, and they all come with RFID blocking to prevent digital theft. So check out rich.com forward slash D2EA and use offer code D2EA to get 10% off. about it. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Let's take a look at the new SRV that we just got in the game called the Scorpion. So we see we have the SRV Scorpion here and next to it we have the SRV Scarab, which of course we have had in the game for years. I just want to start with a physical tour around them because one thing that, that at least surprised me when I saw it first was its size. It is actually a little bit shorter than uh, than the other one, the, the Scarab. And it's not as big as I thought. We have to remember that this is a dual seat SRV, um, combat focused, as you can probably guess, but it's not a whole lot bigger. And when you think about it, it makes sense because they would have to make sure that it actually fits in the uh, in the hangar on the ships and within the opening, so they wouldn't have to redesign all the ships in order to accommodate this new SRV. So it makes sense that it's kind of the same size. It looks a little funny, I think, from the side. Now, there's actually also been some changes to the Scarab here. It has its cargo upgraded, so it now it can hold up to four tons of cargo compared to the two tons it could before, and the two tons you can now have in the Scorpion. But I think without further ado, let's just go inside and uh, let's take this thing for a ride. You will notice, of course, you have the choice between going to the pilot seat and the crew seat. As I said, this is a multi-seat SRV. So let's jump on inside and uh, let's take this thing for a spin. First of all, listen to this. It sounds amazing, I think. It sounds absolutely awesome. Driving characteristics, it doesn't accelerate as quickly as the uh, as the Scarab does. And because of that, it also uh, obviously doesn't reach its top speed as fast, but it also feels like it sticks to the ground a little bit better. It doesn't slip and slide as much um, as you may be used to. As you can see, you can definitely make it spin out if you want to, but it's a little bit more difficult, I find, to uh, to make this uh, this thing slip compared to uh, to the old SRV. Now let's talk about the multi-crew functionality of this thing. If you are driving it on your own, you have access to the weapons, as you can see here. Where on top you're gonna have a plasma repeater, very interesting weapon. There's a lot of interesting game mechanics around that. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And as a secondary weapon, you have access to missiles. Now these missiles here, if I just Go ahead and target. As you can see here, they are seeker missiles. They can log on, and then you can fire them, and uh, and they'll do damage as uh, as missiles do. You of course also, as with the other SRV, have the option to go into the turret. You can see I can still drive the SRV around if I want to. I control the the turret, shoot the cannon, shoot the the missiles as I see fit. So all that functionality is exactly the same, but. If I, for instance, go ahead and uh, exit the vehicle, and I go ahead and put myself in the crew seat instead. First of all, you will notice that the view from the crew seat, which is right behind the, the pilot seat, is very, very limited. If I go ahead and uh, turn on my, my Toby uh, head tracker here, you can have a look around. We can see there's not a whole lot of view from back here. You have that very, very obscure view out the front, but that's about it. You don't really see a lot. By the way, if you're interested in a Toby Eye Tracker, there is a link in the description. Just go to toby.d2a.com. When you're sitting back here as the gunner, you can go down here and you can uh, can take over the gunner role. Now, I, of course, can't do that right now because I am the only one in, uh, in the vehicle. But if it were two people, I could then take over the gunner role. If I take over the gunner role, the driver loses access to the weapons. The driver can no longer go into the turret. That's now my role as a gunner and I can go into the turret, control the turret while someone else is driving. And as soon as I leave the gunner role, then the um, then the turret control is handed back to the driver and they have access to it as we just saw before. 
But let's go ahead and let's dive into the statistics on the vehicle, and we're going to start with the shields. As you can see here, the Scarab has 40 hit points of shields, where the new Scorpion has 130 hit points of shield. That means that this thing has more than three times the shield hit points compared to the Scarab. So it is way more tanky, at least on its shields. Notice here, the all the resistances are the same. The hit point generation and the broken hit point generation rates are also identical between the two vehicles. So it just have a massive buff to its shields, making it a way more tanky ships in combat situations. If we move over and take a look at the armor, we can see it is a similar story over here with all resistances being exactly the same, but we see about a 50% buff to the um, to the armor hit points, also making it a lot more tanky uh, on the armor side. The sensors are exactly the same between the two. They have the same range, they have the same scan angles, so all of that is exactly the same between the two vehicles. If we go and look at the capacitor, we get something interesting happen. We can see here the weapon capacitor is significantly bigger on the uh, on the Scorpion. Um, it has a little bit less for the uh, for the engine. Uh, and a significant more for systems. So again, we have a huge buff on the capacitor for both shields as well as weapons, again, combat focused, but we lose a little bit on the engine. And the similar story uh, when we look at the weapon recharge, or the, the recharge rate in general, where you have half a megawatt a second across the board on the scarab. We once again see um, a buff on the uh, on the weapon and the system recharge rate. Uh, and we also see that the, uh, that the engine recharge rate has been reduced a little bit down to 0.4 megawatts a second. A thing worth noting here is that even though it doesn't look like much on the capacitor side for the engine, just take a look at this. How quickly that thing goes out. There we go. That's it. That's all you get in terms of boost. You do not get a lot of boost in this. Um, so it's not that like mobile in that sense that you, you're not going to make this thing jump on top of uh, tall buildings or anything like that um, because that capacitor will drain very, very quickly as you can see. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at the weapon systems because the Scorpion, of course, we have two weapon systems. We have both the um, the plasma repeater and we have the missiles. Now, if you look at the raw damage per shot here, we can uh, we can see them here. But I think what people are mostly interested in is the DPS. Interestingly, here notice how the DPS on the Scorpion is almost half of what you have on the Scarab. So the new combat SRV does almost half the damage as the Scorpion does. However, there is a point to be made here, and that is that the Scarab has a laser weapon on it, and that laser weapon does purely thermal damage, whereas the, um, the Scorpion has a plasma weapon, and plasma has its damage type split between thermal and absolute damage, and absolute damage ignores resistances, so even though the sheet DPS is lower, the actual DPS output of it is higher than shown here in the raw stats, because it has that absolute damage that ignores resistances. Just to kind of show you what this plasma repeater can do, take a look at my crate phantom here. This is an exploration build. It doesn't have a whole lot of hit points, but let's just get this thing ramped up and just look at how it just strips the shields off that thing. And it'll keep firing for quite a while. We can go into armor here. Now we can begin to see how it also does some respectable damage to, uh, to armor, but it can definitely, uh, it can rip some shields off, uh, off ships um, but again, we're going to come back, we're going to talk more about the weapons, and I'm going to show you something here in uh, in a second. We can see they have identical distributed draw, but the armor piercing on the plasma repeater on the Scorpion is a little bit lower, going down from 22 on the Scarab to 18. Shot speed is significantly higher at a kilometer and a half a second compared to 800 meters a second on the, on the Scarab. And reload time is a little smaller. And now comes the interesting part. The... Uh, Scorpion has a three degree jitter. That is a lot of jitter. It has a lot of jitter. That means that the shot's gonna go all over the place. But also notice the ranges. The fall off starts out at 1800 with a max range of three kilometers on the new Scorpion, whereas the, uh, the old Scarab would only have a max range of 800 meters. That means that the fall off of the Scorpion is more than twice the max range <laughs> on, the, on the Scarab. This thing can shoot at distances and I think the reason they have done this is they want to be able to use the Scorpion to combat ships as well. And of course, if you want to combat ships, they'll be up in the uh, up in the air somewhere, so you need that range. But then you might think, but with three degrees of jitter, you're not going to hit anything at three kilometers. And you are right. But if we jump back in here, I just wanted to pay very close attention now to where my shots are landing as I am firing the main weapon. 
Notice in the top how it's all over the place. And then slowly, as I fire it, it begins to zone in and becomes more and more focused towards a single area there in the middle. Look at that. Now it's very super, super accurate. So that three degrees of jitter, that inaccuracy is only in the beginning. And the more, the longer you shoot with it, that cone narrows in and it becomes super accurate after that. And I think it's an interesting mechanic having a variable jitter. I could see this being kind of a balancing thing where you would have to commit to a target, you have to stay on a target for a while, you would have to also put pips over to your weapons in order to keep that weapon firing. So it is a little bit more difficult to use, and I guess it's also a way to kind of mitigate that you just have this thing come drive around a corner, and then just snipe someone who's on foot, because right when it opens up with its weapon, that large jitter means that even people on foot, if people take it into uh, on foot combat, they're gonna have time to react and, and go for cover, because when it opens up initially, those shots are gonna go everywhere, and chances for you to get hit, well, you could get unlucky, but chances are gonna be low. So, I think that the, the, it's a clever way Frontier has made this Scorpion both balanced in on foot combat but also balanced for ship combat because again you can't just come out of the corner and snipe someone right away uh, in the same way as you can with the with the scarab but again you, if you get them timed you can begin to sort in the people but it should give people time to go to cover but you can still fight against ships if you keep the trigger down so there is a lot of like trade trade-offs here but i can see what frontier has been trying to do they've really been trying to balance this both against on foot combat but also against um space-based combat but of course there's nothing preventing you from driving around a corner and firing a missile at people but again looking at the stats for the missile here we can see again that the single damage output of it is, is significant does a lot of damage um, but the rounds per second is very low that means yes you're gonna get a shot off very quickly with the missile but it's gonna take time for it to reload before you have, um, before you get the next missile off. Again, giving people time to uh, to go for cover. And don't get fooled by the 0.7 seconds rate of fire here. You might think, okay, so people have like just over a second to get into cover. That's nothing. It only loads one missile at a time. Then it has to go through a reload phase, and the reload time is six seconds. That means you have about the rate of fire plus the reload time meaning you have about seven seconds between missiles which should give you plenty of seconds to uh, plenty of time to to go and and look for cover um before the next missile is is ready to go but so the missiles i can see them being useful for taking out groups of people or take down groups of people's shield quickly but i think mostly they are intended to go against sh uh, ships as you can also see they have a very very neat um damage piercing here uh, armor piercing with the uh, with 60 armor piercing points but what do you think about it? Do you like it? Do you think it's stupid? What would you change about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.